The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Lincoln Chaffee. Good morning. What a pleasure to join so many of my fellow Democrats and candidates who come here later. And we're all dedicated, everyone in this room, obviously, to keeping the presidency and winning back the House and Senate. And we all know that the Republican agenda sets back women's rights. And I pledge all my energy towards a big 2016 victory for Democrats across the country. And we do have a winning message of building a strong middle class, investing in education and infrastructure, extending health coverage to more and more Americans, granting a path to citizenship to those who've lived in the shadows for too long, accepting the science of climate change, and having the leadership to cut back on fossil fuel consumption with sound policy. We defend our civil liberties and women's reproductive freedoms. We respect the rights of our LGBT friends, understand that black lives matter. And that we do need to do more for Native Americans. And most of all, you can be sure that Democrats will make good appointments to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Something this country needs and deserves. Now, as you may know, I've been campaigning on a platform of prosperity through peace. But after much thought, I've decided to end my campaign for the president today. Thank you. But I would like to take this opportunity one last time to advocate for a chance be given to peace. Since today is all about women's leadership, it reminds me of one of my favorite Greek plays, Lysistrata, a comedy from 400 BC by Aristophanes. Now in that play, a group of women, fed up with the warmongering of their husbands, agree to, and how do I say this appropriately, withhold their favors <laughs> until peace returns. And it worked. They ended the Peloponnesian Wars. Well, anyway, let's talk about the present. <laughs> Studies show that women tend to lead differently than men, and that women are more likely to be collaborative and team-oriented. It is undeniable the benefits women provide to the pursuit of peace. Now, when I was a senator, a general from the Pentagon testified before the Foreign Relations Committee on global military powers. And I asked him, who was second to the United States in military might? And he thought for a bit, and then he said, probably the UK. Now, yes, that was a few years ago, but the point remains true. No real rival to the United States exists when it comes to total weaponry. Now, we make Virginia-class submarines in Rhode Island, and I've been on an overnight patrol. What a phenomenal piece of technology and craftsmanship a machine bristling with the most advanced power imaginable. And submarines are just one instrument in our staggeringly efficient arsenal of war. And yet, we are sinking ever deeper and deeper into an endless morass in the Middle East and North Africa. People keep dying and peace seems further and further away. It's evident that all this military power isn't working for us right now. Let me share a story from Da Nang, Vietnam. Da Nang, that city has so many memories for my generation. But just this summer, former Viet Cong and ex-American GIs were laughing, eating, drinking, and celebrating the 4th of July together. And the article quoted Pete Peterson, a former Air Force pilot who spent six and a half years in a Hanoi prison camp after he was shot down. 
and later he served as ambassador to Vietnam in the 1990s. And he said now Vietnam and the United States have so much in common. After all the horror of that war, why did we do it, he was asked. And he said, I have thought about this for a long time. I'm convinced that the war could have been averted had we made the effort to understand the politics of the place. Had we made the effort to understand the politics of the place. Ladies and gentlemen, from what I've heard, none of the Republicans running for president want to understand anything about the Middle East and North Africa. Instead, they prefer more bellicosity, more saber rattling, and more blind macho posturing. And when I hear all this tough talk, I have deja vu about the evil Viet Cong. We should be different. Democrats should insist on learning from the lessons of Vietnam. It all could have been averted. Now, I'm not saying that all countries are right in any particular thing they do. We must hold them accountable, but we can't do that if we don't hold ourselves accountable and change our entire paradigm. The United States is so strong militarily, economically, culturally, that we must take chances for peace. If we have courage, if we take risks, we can have prosperity through peace, not just in the United States, but all over the world. Do we want to be remembered as a bomber of weddings and hospitals? Or do we want to be remembered as peacemakers, as pioneers of a more harmonious world? If American war veterans and Viet Cong fighters can laugh together on the 4th of July, then I know so too can Iranians and Israelis, Shias and Sunnis, Turks and Kurds. Now a wise man, President Eisenhower, counseled us that only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry could ensure the proper meshing of both security and liberty. So it's up to you, women, citizens, humans, to demand from your leaders an end to the endless wars and the beginning of a new era for the United States and humanity. Thank you, go Democrats in 2016. Thank you, Democrats. Thank you, women.